Okay, you guys, my storage space. I had to clean up more photos, more videos. I already deleted a lot of them, but I don't know. So anyways, guys, I'm back to part two. Sorry for that. I just want to do one video, but I got to come back on and be obedient and keep going with this, you guys. But yes, your value is not tied to those things or those people. It is tied to Christ. So I want you guys to think about that in this season that you are in. Examine it for every area of your life. You know, and look at what God is saying to you or trying to say to you and look at how he says that you are a success. Look at how he says you are valuable and who you are to him. Amen, you guys. So now we're getting ready to get into um, the reading, you guys. And I just feel like to say this, usually when we um, talk about the themes and the overviews and everything, um, that be that as well. But I feel like to say this, like, I just feel like to say this part for somebody that probably didn't watch this. And guys, I'm sorry if my car is loud because I still have it on and different things. But like he said, for this month, this is a month. This is a month of um, supreme delight, new, new beginnings, new blooms, um, new things like that. But supreme delight and how as we delight ourselves in him, he has given us the desires of our heart and that he wants to be uh, the desire of our heart. He wants to be our number one. He wants to be our main and only, right? Um, God wants us to keep him first and we will never be put last, right? And how Psalms 23 and Psalms 37, 4 is our foundational scripture, but even how that ties into success. What a blessing it is to know that the almighty God that created the heavens and the earth says that you are a success, that you are made in his image and likeness, that he, like what he feels about you is the, the final standard, it's the final say. You know what I mean? So it's not what others think about you. Even some of you is not even what you think. God could work all of that for beauty. Like God could give you beauty for ashes, right? God could turn all that around. Like Ecclesiastes talks about, he will make everything beautiful in his time. And Isaiah is the one that talks about the beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning and things like that. But we're going to get into the scriptures now, you guys. The scriptures for today is going to be, um, let me go there really quick. The scriptures for today is going to be Psalms 37, 4, Philippians 4, 13, Genesis 39, 2 through 6, Psalms 1, 1 through 3, Proverbs 16, 3, 1 Kings 2, 1 through 3, and Matthew 16, 26 through 27. Okay, so I'm going to be flipping in the Bible. Some days I'm going to be coming from the computer. Some days I'm going to come from the Bible. Some days it'll be video. Some days it'll be audio. You guys, it just however God give it to me for that day. But you guys think about that all throughout today. That I'm successful in Christ. I'm a success not because of my own merits or my own accomplishments or my own works. Whatever I am, it's because of the grace of God. I Through him, I live and move and have my very being. I, got, I, I won't forget to, to, to give you the glory. I won't be prideful. I'll be humble. God, I will, I will remember what you have brought me out of. I'll remember, God, that you are with me. Even some things that you are bringing me through right now, God. I will remember to give you glory. I'll remember, God, that all the glory goes to you. Like my life... And the light you've put in me, this is a word for somebody, is for me to glorify you. That is my success, that I get to spend eternity with you in heaven. That is my success of what you deliver me out of and what you deliver me from and what you pulling me through and what you put me out of. That is my success, that I don't look like what I've been through. That is my success, God, that I am who you have called me to be, that I see myself the way you help me to see myself, God. I'm made in your image and likeness. That is my success. That I'm stronger and braver and bolder than what I've been through. That you're still with me, God. That I'm sane and in my right mind. That I don't look like what they left me in. That I don't look like some of my past mistakes and foolishness, God. That is my success, God. That is my success. That's a word for somebody this morning. That is your success. That God will help you to see what real success is in him. And that you know better days are up ahead for you. Even in the midst of storms or trials or tribulations, better days are up ahead for you. Psalms 37. And guys, with these scriptures, y'all can read them in full context. This is just the way he told me to read them. Some days we'll read full chapters. Some days we just going to read the verses. So you guys can read them in full context or check out when we did Bible study videos on them. But pretty much I'm just going to be reading them. So Psalms 37 is talking about David contrasts the godly and the wicked. It's a Psalm of David for verse 4. This is our foundational scripture for this month. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Us delighting ourselves in the Lord is a success. Not just that he would give us the desires of our heart, but just us being able to delight ourselves in the Lord and have a relationship with the Lord. Thank God for Jesus' atonement, his sacrifice in the blood of Jesus, guys. Thank God 
for a relationship with him right so psalms 37 for the next one is philippians 4 13 and let me i gotta flip guys so y'all bear with me but i do gotta flip today in the bible but i pray somebody's getting as something out of this glory to god let me find philippians you guys Philippians 4 is talking about Paul's advice, rejoice in the Lord. Paul says, thank you. I just say that for you that never read it. Or you just may be wondering, what is it talking about fully in case you want to read it? That's what it's talking about. But verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Because he's talking about just basically a few scriptures before that. How he know what it's like to be content in any every situation. He know what it is to abase and abound. And that's success too, because knowing that God is with you through all your seasons, the God, not not the not universe over God, but God over the universe. God that created the universe. God that is bigger than this earth and the heavens and all of that. God is good. So you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. That's a success. Because the enemy reward his children as well, but it's going to come with a cost in this earth and his life if they don't repent and continue to be disobedient and in eternity. But to know that the almighty God is with you, you're going to always win, even if it feel like a loss. God will use that for something. It will make you stronger, will bring him glory, and it will not be wasted. God doesn't waste pain. He don't waste your sorrows. He don't waste your tears. Like the Bible talk about uh, the, the tears are bottled up in the heavens. I believe that's there, but it's like God doesn't waste it, you guys. So Genesis 39, 2 through 6 is the next one, you guys. Genesis 39. Is talking about uh, we have a Joseph series, but it's talking about Joseph is promoted in Potiphar's house. Joseph resists the temptation of Potiphar's wife. Joseph is falsely accused. Joseph in prison. And do you know, even though that looked like it was working against him, it worked for him. And God used that for the mighty plan and deliverance that he had to deliver them people in the famine and the nation of his children and just other nations and how he used it to promote and elevate Joseph. So in the midst, this is a word for somebody in the midst of you being promoted and being slandered and falsely accused and lied on and have to resist temptation and different things. God is even using that for your success. What the enemy meant for evil, God will work for the good. Like Joseph told his brothers, I believe in Genesis 50, 20. But let's read Genesis. Let me read verses one through six. I said two through six, but let's read one through six. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. Come on. So we talk about success this morning. And he was a prosperous man. Do you see how success and prosperity, but godly success and prosperity, how it tied together? Because again, that scripture is coming to me. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he add no sorrow with it. If it's adding sorrow with it, See if that's the true blessing of the Lord. Because it's not saying, this is a word for somebody listening to me this morning. It's not saying you won't go through different things. But if it's bringing sorrow with it, see if that's really the blessing of the Lord. Because there are some people in this, earth, in this earth and in this life, they'll say, oh, I give God the glory and I thank God for this. But the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he add no sorrow with it. It's not going to come with sorrow. So if it's costing you your peace and it's bringing you sorrow, self-reflect and see if that's as really is from the Lord. Okay, it's saying the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. See, relationship with God make a difference. Your personal relationship with God make a difference, you guys, because people can see when God's hand is on you. They can see it. The unrighteous and the righteous, they can see it. They can see it. Just like his brother saw God's favor on him more than what he saw. You know, we did a series on it, but they saw him. Even from afar, people can see it. Your relationship with God make a difference. Don't trade that for nothing for nobody. Not even for you or what you may think you want. Relationship with God make a difference and it matters. You guys. And it's saying his master saw that the Lord was with him. You got to think about these Egyptians didn't have the same God that we have. They didn't have the same God as our God, as Joseph. They didn't have the same God, but they could still see it. The spirit world and the natural world see it, you guys. I hope this thing don't cut off. I didn't clean up the stuff, but if it do cut off, I'll just leave the rest of the notes below, you guys. In his master saw him reading this again for somebody that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So godly success and prosperity goes together, right? And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseeing his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. So he was blessed because Joseph was there. 
there are some people that's connected to you. They being blessed the way that they are because of the favor that's on your life, because of the anointing and grace of God that's on your life. But be mindful also, because this is a God thing, because he need Potiphar house to, to get to the, the, the prison and then to the palace. So all of this is a part of it. But for some of you, it may be a lot. Everybody don't deserve access to you for the favor and blessings that some people just want to hang on to your, go, your coattail, but everybody don't deserve access. So you need to know, like we talk about um, over the years, people are like the mouth system. Who was coming to add? Who's coming to multiply? Who's coming to divide? Who's coming to subtract? Okay. And so it's saying and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Amen. So personally and business and just every area was blessed. And thank you, Lord. And that's like we were just talking about before in part one, how every area of our life mattered to God. Right. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew not all he had, save the bread, which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. So success, prosperity and favor, they all ties and go together like we talked about some time back. OK, we got a few more verses, you guys. Psalms 1, 1 through 3 is the next one. Psalms 1 is talking about um, the godly and the ungodly. It has six verses, but we're just only reading verses 1 through 3. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful or the mockers. But his delight, y'all see how that word keep coming up? His delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is the order of God. It is the kingdom of God. It is the foundation of God. It is the rules of God. It is the way of God. It is the will of God. God in his law, his word is one. Amen. His government. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Basically, the law of the Lord is the word of God, the way of God, how God wants to do things, what God say, this is how he wanted to do the command of God. And in his law, doth he meditate day and night? God law, his word, his will, his will and his word in him is one together. God said he put his word above his name and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper so there go that word again how delight and prosperity and success and favor and all these things and blessings ties together and how it is a success for us to be in the word of god and meditate on that word because the more that we get that word in our in our uh, spirit it will begin to transform our heart and our mind you know, one of these days, because I told y'all the um, the other day, yesterday, I told y'all what we'll be talking about. One of them days on here is renewal of the mind. We're going to be talking about the importance of renewing our mind, but how med godly meditation and meditating on the word of God make a difference, you guys. Okay, let me go to the next scripture, then I'm going to get off, you guys. I don't want to hold y'all too long. But I'm even being blessed by this this morning, you guys. Proverbs 16, 3. This is one of my favorite scriptures along with Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs 16, 3 says, and I've been, I, I, I live this scripture. I do this with my business and different things that God have given me. I commit these things to him over the years and I do it daily and season and everything. So I live by this one too. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. So when you commit your ways to the Lord, when you commit your plans to the Lord, they will be established, especially when it is of him. Amen. Because a lot of the times the desires and things that God put within us is his desires. It's, it's, it's him using us and being fulfilled. That's why it's so important to, to give God a yes in a fresh surrender, because that yes can make a break. And, you know, it, it, it makes a difference saying the, 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 the saying yes or no can make a break. But the yes to God, I mean, it's worth it, y'all, in this life and in eternity, like I know many of you know. First Kings 2, 1 through 3 is the next one. I got to find it, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to be trying to have my laptop up, top up. That'll be quicker for me, but... It's cool, you know. First Kings 2, 1 through 3. And I'm hearing in my spirit real quick before we go to First Kings and Matthew 16. The Lord is saying for someone that you need to dedicate it to him. Talk to him about the business. Talk to him about the ministry. Talk to him about their relationship. Talk to him about it and see how he feel about it. Give it to him. The Lord is waiting for some of you. You can't just feel like, oh, well, God know how I feel. And that's it. No, you got to talk to him. 
He is, he's really, he been waiting for you to bring it to him. He's been waiting on you to tell him for what you believe in him for. He's been waiting for you to come to him with that. He wants you to come to him. Okay. First Kings two, and you'll be amazed. You'll see a difference. You'll see, you can get God download on it. So first Kings two is talking about David gives a charge to Solomon. Solomon succeeds David as king. And uh, Abathar's life is spared, but he is removed from the priesthood. So verses one through three says, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. He charged Solomon his son saying, and we did a, a David and Solomon series as well. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes. See, this is success. And his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it, is, as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper and all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. And let me read for that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me saying if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul there shall not fail thee said he a man on the throne of Israel. And we know the situation with David and Solomon. You guys are familiar with it and we done Bible story, stories on it studies on it and stuff. But how following the charge of God could lead to success. Walking in godly ways and godly counsel can lead to success. We're going to close out with Matthew 16, 26 through 27. Matthew 16 is talking about the Pharisees demand a sign. Peter declares his faith. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection and what it means to follow Jesus. And someone on here need to read all of this verse, actually. All of this chapter, actually. I know we have a Matthew series, but somebody on here, if you could read this today or whenever you able, read Matthew 16. I believe the Lord will speak to you a fresh word with that. Read it though. Uh, 26 to 27 says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What profit a man if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 27 says, for the son of man shall come in the glory of